All right, guys, we are down in Long Beach. It is Friday. Uh, we got Teddy Bear with us. Mona and I came down to see CT. Um, this will be the first time I've seen CT since the uh, heart surgery. So this would be cool. This would be a, a good afternoon, man. It's nothing better than... Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, uh, we're both guys that started powerlifting in the early 80s. So this has been a long road and a, a long... Uh, being able to watch him and, and see him grow and in the last you know decade becoming such good friends it's a cool thing uh, especially at this stage of our lives where we miss so much time not being friends because we were competitors uh, it's pretty cool to see uh, see who he is and how he's changing the world um, just by not even powerlifting but just by the person he is it's Remarkable. Where's everybody hiding? Oh, oh my goodness. Look who's here. My sexy. <laughs> Give me a little. Oh, look at you guys. Come here. Hi. Come here. I haven't seen you. <laughs> love. The Titan has returned. Oh. Where's the star of the show? She's out there. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, so I'm lucky enough to be at CT's home today. It is Friday. I have not seen you since you got the uh the heart surgery right. and everything That's right. so give me love <laughs> give me love still here we me, still me and teddy bear <laughs> me and teddy bear still here <laughs> so I, I i today came about first of all i just want to see you uh but something that uh i love is that and i'm talking to my fan base now because because when they see you they they go uh the man's a beast, man. He's always, and he's always, uh, and, and that is true. And it's true into a sense of in the gym, you are an absolute beast. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, but it's, it's incredible. And I hope that all my fan base understands this, that your soul and your um, energy being around you is so deep and pure and love. Um, Man. And I wanted you to know that, and I wanted my people out there to know that, that you are somebody, I'm going to cry here. <laughs> yeah, already, we're two minutes in. Well, Teddy Bear is <laughs> pretty close to it, so I we just, can't both be yeah. crying. <laughs> hey, this video is all going to be just us crying all day. <laughs> you guys aren't that beastie. Uh, but I love you, man. I love you, too. And man. we were just talking about... Uh, we both started powerlifting in early 80s. Right. And, and you were saying like 85, mm -hmm. uh, it was your first meet and you were already bodybuilding yeah. at that time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my first one was like in 83. And then we were talking about like Robbie Robinson before us right. was 75. We've been around. Yep. And Robbie looks fantastic, Robbie by looks, the way. And I hate when people go, I want to look like that when I'm that age. Look like Robbie at 20. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> So today came about because I wanted to see you, and then uh, I think a lot of people know that I have a puppy that is 19 years old, Teddy Bear, and she'll be walking around all day today. Um, baby, her bring her, bring her over. Bed? No, just her, oh. just her. I'm the head of the Teddy Bear fan club, by the way. So this is my girl. <laughs> this is Teddy Bear. So, look, have you ever seen a prettier <laughs> face than that? Look at that face. That's the sweetest face you ever seen. Look, look at that. And uh, so today's kind of like about longevity and being in it and uh, changing and growing as you're in the industry. Teddy Bear is 19 years old. 19. I first got Teddy Bear and her sister, Bunny. Uh, in 1999, when I did the cover of Muscle and Fitness, they brought in these two little puppies, and I shot with them all day. And at the end of the shoot, they're like, all right, um, we're going to take them back to the pound. And it's like, remember the word pound? Yeah. Yeah, they don't even, I don't think they have them. Like, the dogs are there for a week, and then they put them to sleep. And so at the end of the shoot, I'm thinking, these are somebody's dogs. I said, no, I'll take them home. And she's been with me ever since. Wow. And, uh. She's been through a lot with me, um, all the ups and downs like most, but uh, she was there when I lost both of my parents, um, comforted me, made me get through it. And she's still here today. 
and she's beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, like like CT said, he's uh, he's in charge of the the fan club, Teddy Bear fan club. When I look at Teddy Bear, and I think about you know, 19 years, and Teddy Bear's been through a lot. She's seen a lot. Just like me, man. <laughs> so I relate. Me and Teddy, we, if I was a dog, I'd be Teddy Bear. That's what I told Mike <laughs> earlier. We've we been through it. But we're still here. We're still here. We're still kicking. How how's, beautiful. <laughs> how's it going with uh, the heart? Well, the heart is going, you know, fantastic. I don't know if you uh, caught the news. That oh, KTLA. yeah. So, I did. <laughs> so, I want them to catch it, too, though. <laughs> so uh, I, I revealed... Since you've seen it, then you know I revealed on the news program because I thought it was uh, the largest audience that I, you know, that I've been able to reach thus far. So I wanted to, you know, let it out in front of as many people as possible. So I let them all know that uh, the Superman from Compton has the heart of a superwoman. So my uh, donor was a woman, and I thought <laughs> I thought that was great. Uh, you know, a, a great place to let it let the world know. So That's fantastic. Awesome. Huh, Teddy B. How long has it been now since the surgery? Oh, it was May 5th, single day mile of this year. So however many months that is. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we in? Huh? Five months Five now. months. Five months ago. And I saw uh, Big Rob and he says you're already out running. <laughs> if you want to call that running, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> She's just going to walk around. Um, I want to talk about the start when you started lifting. What got you started? Well, uh, what got me started was uh, uh, the stories I used to hear as a kid. You know, uh, they told me uh, stories about my grandfather as far as I can remember. And they called him Grandpa. We called him Grandpa Mew because he was reportedly as strong as a mule. And uh, I used to hear that story, I heard how my father pulled a tree out of the ground. And I'm like, That's a good wow. story. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> When you're a kid, man, you know, a tree? <laughs> so I always wanted to be strong and, you know, and felt like that it was just uh, something that was natural for me. You had to be, you had to be a little fletcher, you had to be strong. Right. So, uh, I guess that's what got me to it. It got, got me into it, wanting to prove I was the strongest, like you. <laughs> and then what made it go from just training to that next level, wanting to be the best in the world? To an obsession. Well, uh, that, and I'm sure you can relate to this, that is, that is something that uh, you can't uh, be taught or uh, either you have that drive or you don't. And I, I think I've always had it from a kid. I always wanted to be the best at whatever I was doing. You know, if I was running track or, or whatever it was, fucking tiddlywinks. I wanted to be the best tiddlywinker. <laughs> whatever it was, I wanted to be the best at it. And I think that's something, like I said, that you just gotta be born with. So let's, let's take that. You started, you competed, and you were a champion, why is it, to me too, what is it that changed from that to where you are now? You are bigger now than when you were a champion of lifting and meets. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're more motivating now than when you won meets, or at least to me and to people that I talk to, who you are is bigger than powerlifting, is bigger than bodybuilding. Can you translate that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Mike. Uh, <laughs> if you are planning, youngsters, on being a uh, professional powerlifter and making a lot of money, forget about it. <laughs> I know you can attest to yep, that. Yep. <laughs> You're not going to get rich being a powerlifter, that's for sure. I thought, I mean, uh, I, I mean, a world champion powerlifter. There was just uh, no money in powerlifting per se. And I thought that uh, when I was younger, you know, hey, if I can be the strongest guy out there, there's got to be some kind of way of making a living at this. There was not. We had one, no. 
bench press contest. I think they offered a thousand dollar prize, and I was I won that thousand dollars, and I was like, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was you're like, buying dinner. Yeah, <laughs> drinks that, on CT. That was the the top prize money that yeah. I ever got from powerlifting. I tell you that powerlifting is not the way to go if you want to be rich. So. Uh, the, the goal of being, it, it was more important to me, uh, and I think Khabib in, this, in his last fight said it best, the, being a world champion was much more important than the money. Yep. The uh, honor became one, it was a, a lifelong goal, and to be crowned champion of the whole entire world was much more important, and it has to be, you know, to the same, the guys, all the guys who were there competing had to be the same way, because it wasn't no prize money, what, you, you might get a trophy, a little trophy or something, like and we'd be out there, all of us, you know, willing to kill yourself for that trophy, man, so it, it's the title, the title that comes along with it, Mr. America, I mean, that, that if, you, if you were Mr. America in 1962, as long as you, as long as you're alive, and they, they see you now, 2018, you're still Mr. America. Yep. So that title means everything. The money, you know, we, we didn't think, I didn't think about the money back then. It wasn't nothing to be made anyway. But uh, later on, I mean, if it wasn't for YouTube, nobody still would know me. <laughs> it, it's, if I can say this right, winning for the individual, for us was bigger than any fame, any money, or anything else. And maybe that's, that's switched a little bit, that, uh, that, that people go into things going, if I win this, then I'll get money and fame. And I think that's secondary. I think that's, if you go into it for that reason, you're not going to give it everything. That's right. If you're going in and going, I am obsessed, and I want to win. Yep. And I don't want to win for you and this person and that person. I want to win for me. Yep. That's correct. I mean, obsession is the, is the correct word. Because <laughs> I, I know, man, that, uh, like I said, it wasn't the Olympics, but it was my Olympics. Yes. You know what I mean? To me, that contest meant everything. <laughs> everything. My, my last contest, Mike, the, I found out that I had the heart, bad heart valve. Uh, right before that, a few months before my last contest, the greatest bench press in America. And a doctor comes to me and he said, uh, you know, Mr. Fletcher, your valve is so bad, your aortic valve is so bad that it could uh, rupture right there wow. on stage. And if it ruptures on stage- I know what you're gonna do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> ruptures on stage, you're gonna die in front of everybody. Now, I know you don't want that, do you, Mr. Fletcher? Look me in the eyeballs, I know you don't want that, do you, Mr. Fletcher? And I said, uh, <laughs> Look, Doc, <laughs> I know you mean well, but ain't no fucking way that I'm not going to compete. I am going to, if it ruptures, it just ruptures. I can't think of a, a better way to go than oh, doing what man. I love to do. I love that. Oh, man, that's, uh, we're different that way. That, uh, mine wasn't ex extreme, extreme as that, but when American Gladiators came back around for their second run and, and, uh, they asked me to come back and, and do it, and I tried out and kicked ass, and I got it, and team captain and all that. And I'm like, this is great, and we're getting ready, and we're doing all the practices. It's the day of the filming, um, and, we, and we get there, and they go, well, we're going we're gonna to rehearse uh, the gauntlet. And so we had a big alternate guy, big boy, you know, 6'5", 275, and he's got a 10-foot uh, run, and i got to stay still and just hit him with a pad. Um, I think it was about 15 minutes, 20 minutes before we start production. And I'm like, this is, this will be cool. All psyched. He runs at me. I'm sitting there with a pad. He hits me. Uh, then he gets by and uh, I twist my ankle. Um, say nothing. My, my approach is, is, is a lot like an animal's approach. Never say anything. Don't ever say nothing, ever. Um, they'll just feed off you yep. at that point. So I go back to the locker room. Uh, everybody gets dressed. We get our spandex on. Yeah, spandex, but it's TV, so it's all right. <laughs> so we get ready, and then I wait until everybody walks out, and I grab the, uh, the doc there, and I go, do me a favor. Uh, just between you and me, you can't say nothing. You're going to tape up my ankle as hard as you possibly can. Uh, 
pulled down my pants and socks, uh, and it was already black and blue at this time because I snapped it. Uh, he taped it up, and for the next 60 days, I played on that. Whoa. Um, but it was one of those options where it's like, there's five guy gladiators out of the entire world. And do you think yep. I'm for a second going to give up that part? <laughs> you know, because I told the producer at the end of the show when we were done filming, I go, here's some pictures. This is what happened. He goes, well, you should have told us, man. We would have worked around. No, you wouldn't have. No. Nope. I would have been replaced. Yep. I would have been kicked out. Just like that. And it was, uh, it felt great to go through it without nobody knowing and nobody could even see it. Yep. And fight through it. And, and you did the same. It's, we're in it. Yep. You're not gonna. You're not gonna pull us back at that point. Nope. No way. But what? Okay. Now let me ask you a question. Woo! I like that story, by the way. But uh, so, how do you feel about people, whiners and complainers? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it buzzed the fuck out of me. I'm gonna tell you that <laughs> big time. Uh, you know, they you why know, well, I twisted my wrist or you know my my eyebrows is not quite arched enough and i can't go to the gym today cg <laughs> that bugs the fuck out of me uh how do you feel about whiners and complainers all right so you know i train at four in the morning yes i know there's not just reasons of like more productive day um uh, just getting my time alone in the gym to go crazy um all those kind of things but it's also so I don't have that craziness in the gym around me. And, and, it's, uh, and I wind out and get rid of the uh, complainers uh, <laughs> because you, you're not gonna miss a four o'clock workout. Yeah. Nobody, nobody can. Because all you're gonna be doing at four o'clock is sleeping. Yep. So I'm asking you to give up a little bit to stay on course and steady. And if you really wanna be a champion, you'll be there. Um, so it gets rid of a lot of those things that, and I never say this stuff, and I never do it on social media, but it irritates me. Yeah. Or watching other people train, and I'm like, what are you doing? It's frustrating. And so at 4 o'clock till 6 o'clock, that gym's mine, and I don't get any of that, and I don't get the frustration, and I don't get the excuses. And that way, later on, maybe I can deal with it a little better and, and, and talk to them. But it's it's a definite, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Teddy's back. Um, I hate saying that it's a different time and generation, uh, but back in our day, we had to get up and we had to get to work. <laughs> you did. We had to go do our stuff. Do you want to hang out here? Come here. She just wants to hang out with CT. <laughs> Come here, girl. Um, but the whole... I'm the star, I'm the star of this show. <laughs> The whole concept about excuses and all that, that's just, that's not, well, it's not you, it's not me. We don't do that. No. Uh, we wouldn't be here still. No. And I was just doing a, an interview with Sean Ray a, a bit ago, and I was just saying, name some people that are still relevant from the 80s. <laughs> but you, you went from a champion of titles for yourself and now you're something bigger than that. You're, you're moving generations, you're moving. When I travel the world, the one video everybody says they, they saw was yours and mine. Yep. They go, yeah, we saw you with CT. <laughs> yep. and, and, and that is their number one video. And uh, I don't know how to say it, but you're doing more now on who you are and the life you're leading. And you're stronger now than you've ever been in your life. Because I removed the eye. I removed the eye, Mike. When I was young, it was all I, 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 I. Oh, I know. I am I, the one. I was that. <laughs> that, was my, uh, that was my speech that I used to say in my head. I am the one. And that's, that's, uh, you know, that's how I felt. It was all I, 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 I. And so after going through the things that I've been through, <laughs> That will erase the hell out of I. I realize how insignificant and unimportant I am. I mean, after going through that, you, all this stuff, all these muscles and things that you, you know, that you're obsessed with and you built up over years and years and years can be taken away. Boom. Boom. Just like that. 
all of that, all of that hard work and grunting and, and straining can be taken away just like that. I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my wife, just like we talking. One minute and the next minute, I'm dead. I am dead, flatline, out, just dead. And the thing is, my, I felt it. You felt it coming? I felt it coming. I didn't think, I, and it wasn't like I was dozing off to sleep. Right. There's a big old difference. difference between dying and dozing off to sleep. It's, it's, it's not people, in the movies, it might look like, like you just peacefully <laughs> float off to sleep. It's a big old difference. Your, your body knows that this is permanent. There's a permanency about it, and your body knows, hey, I'm going out and out, I'm not coming back. And I remember my dad telling me that my mom, the only thing she could do before she died, because he was there, was yell his name. That's all she had time to do was yell his name. All I had time to do was yell my wife's name. I said, wow. B, B, and that's it, I was gone. And I thought that, you know, uh, you know my uh, pacemaker or defibrillator kicked in and brought me back. But Mike, it felt like that I had been asleep for at least eight hours. Wow. And my and wife was only took moments? two minutes. Two minutes. And it felt like eight hours. So I'm telling you, <laughs> death is a sleep like no other, Jack. It is, it is so peaceful. It was the, the it's, I felt refreshed and so peaceful. So anybody, I, I think that anybody has been that close to dying will no longer fear death. It's, it, oh, it, yes. that just erased the fear from, it was just so, peaceful and so you know i my whole body everything was just at peace and i felt so refreshed but it's a big old difference between <laughs> sleep and death that's for sure with with that happening and the concept of and i'll guarantee this you live every day oh yeah you live every single day no time to waste yeah. and back in the day you thought you had all the time in the world yep and it was all about you and you were going to win and nothing. And I think because we've been in this game so long and we've been doing it and, and um, we're, we're still growing as we do this, but you really do change so much when you're that 20 and 30 year old. Except he don't look no <laughs> different than That's he it. did in 1985. <laughs> He looks so fu we might I think he looked better than he fucking did. And that's that just ain't right. That shit ain't right. I think he looked better than he did in 85, man. That's f Everybody else getting old and beat up and shit. Gotta use it just for me. And this motherfucker looking younger is younger every day. That makes no sense. Um excuse me. No, that's all right. Uh but for us now, it is so much more and we, I think we try to teach this, that it is about living in the day. There's nothing should scare you. Oh, no. Because when you're done, you're done. That's it. And, and regret is the worst thing in the world. Yes. Ooh. I hope you heard that. Regret is the worst thing in the world. You think that maybe failing is the worst thing. Bullshit. Regret not fucking trying. Ooh. Excellent. I <laughs> got that one. Excellent point. <laughs> and we just, yeah, I, I messed that, that all up. up. We <laughs> both. <laughs> but uh, excellent point. With, with everything that's going on now with you, with traveling, um, now that you're coming back from the heart surgery, what is next for you? Okay, I still can't uh, travel out of the state. I'm limited to California now, and I can't wait to get back on the road. You're itching man. now. Oh yeah, I want to go, you know, back to Russia, back to Austria. But I want to travel again. I miss it big time. But uh, you know, when I, when I was down, <laughs> I was really down. Man. Yeah. It was I mean, you would Mike would uh contact me every so often, you know, see just see how I'm doing pretty often. So yeah, uh, I'm annoying that way. Just, I'm no, checking no. up on him. <laughs> I, not, not enough to be annoying, but he, but he, enough to let me know that he cared. And he would, uh, you know, text me. And, How you doing? You okay? You all right? Now, I really appreciate that, by the way. 
because you know, hey, sometimes when you get down, man, you you you'll find out who your friends are and, and who not. And some of you, I shit, I didn't hear from them at all. <laughs> you know, when I was uh, down, so uh, you'll find out who really your friends are when something happens, when tragedy comes into your life. So Mike, it's, he, he, he would call me up, check on me, see how I'm doing. But I was out, man, unable to, uh, you know, make a living for a year and a half. Couldn't do shit. So we, we hung on. We hung in here and people were like, hey, you want to go fund me? You want me to do this? Fuck no. <laughs> I don't want no goddamn go fund me. It's people, uh, they go through shit every day. You know, people, uh, yeah, I can't pay my light bill. Me either, motherfucker. <laughs> you, okay, what you want me to do about it? <laughs> I'm struggling, CT. Me too, motherfucker. I'm struggling too. For a year and a half, I wasn't able to do shit. Lay on my back, you know, and uh, try to try to get better. And uh, thank God, and to some and some good doctors and some wonderful nurses. I'm sitting here talking to the Titan once again. <laughs> once once again, we're doing this. That's right. Um, and teddy bear. <laughs> teddy bear. So let's, let's jump on there because it is a, an interesting thing as you go through because social media is such a big thing and uh, everybody wants to be with the, uh, the, the big influencer, the guy that's famous. Yep. And I think you and we are leading into something that's very important. When you're all hype and everything's great, they want to be your friend. Oh, boy. <laughs> and then when things go sour and you're not relevant, done with you. That's it. <laughs> What's your advice, if any? <laughs> hey, uh, my advice is uh, if they wasn't there when you was down, fuck them. <laughs> I'm telling you, fuck them. You got look. So many people want shit from you. And, and, and some of them think that you're so stupid that you don't know that all they, all they want, the only reason they want to be around you is to get whatever they can from you. And they think you're too stupid to know that. And that's, that, that irks the shit out of me. Hey, you know that you know, it's some numbers that pop up on my phone, Mike, that I hate to see the motherfuckers pop up. Because when they when this when I see this number, Mona, you know. <laughs> you know this motherfucker, what do this motherfucker want now? What do he want now? What what is he gonna ask me for now? I hate this. You got anybody oh, like that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I, I was always uh, you know me, I'm Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. So I'll be kind. But now that I got a a, a woman in my life that is such a savage. Oh, <laughs> That's you just turn them over to Mona. <laughs> the, the, she, she sits there and checks me. She goes, oh, so this is what he wants? This, this is it? This is it? But then when you're doing something, not there? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yep. Wake up. Wake up. And I, I've always kept a close, small circle. And, and, and even more so, I'm, I'm a dog guy, and I could be at peace being alone with a pup. Yeah. Um, but it is, it irks me that uh, with social media, not only will they just attach to you because you're famous at the moment or things are going great, but you know those aren't the people, they're not true friends. And so there's a, there's a, a separation, you can go, you can appreciate that and you love your fans, mm -hmm. but there's people that wanna use you oh. and, and you gotta separate yourself. Yeah. And, and it took me forever to do that, but with Mona, she's, a great buffer for that. She goes, no, yes, no, yes. No problem. I'm on. <laughs> you know her. Yeah, no problem. Eastern block woman. She'll no. shut it down. <laughs> so do you <clears throat> try to answer all the DMs oh, okay. that all you right. get? Because for me, I'm going to be honest with you. Hey, on Instagram, it's fucking impossible yeah. For one person to answer all the messages you get on Instagram. Uh, on Twitter, I can uh, kind of handle it. I'm a little slow, we kinda, or, or Facebook. I mean, when you get over a million, it's pretty hard for one guy to try to answer okay. all those questions. Can you do it? Uh, I used to try. I don't anymore. Also, because a lot of the questions they're asking, 
I'm going to circle back around. Let me do this. I was raised, uh, because I have dyslexia and I couldn't read and write, um, and I was told stupid at a young age, and I loved it because that made me different. Yeah. And I always loved being different. Hell um, yeah. and, and it just made me work twice as hard. So there was one thing, and I know they always said this back in the day, before social media, there's no dumb question. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. There's, oh, there's I billions <laughs> of dumb questions. And then on top of that, I never asked questions. You can get more by paying attention, observing, applying, and then, doesn't work for you? Disregard. It's a, a Bruce Lee said something that was yep. incredible. Knowing is not enough, you must apply. And it seems as though 99% uh, of the Instagram messages are questions. And, and it's like, I, I, I'll take today for example. I was doing uh, lying down side laterals on a, a cable machine. What's the difference between uh, standing and lying? My response, let me know. <laughs> let me know. They can answer their own questions yep. by just attempting this. They don't yeah. need to ask me, what's the oh. better protein, whey or a casing? Go try them. Let me know. And then you'll know what's best for you, my friend. <laughs> so I, I bypass most of all that stuff that if, they're, if they want to take my time, which is that's all we have. Yep. We know this. Yep. When you're 20, you got all the time in the world. Even though tomorrow's not promised to anybody. At least, you, anybody. Think, at least you, you think so. Right. You feel like it, yeah. When you get to our age, you start going, mm -mm, my time is valuable. And it's like, like today I said, thanks for taking time to see Teddy, hang with us. Because I know how busy you are and stuff. And, and I don't want to take your time up and just waste it. I know how important time is. Yes, it's very important, but never, never waste it on you or Mona or Teddy. Thank you. <laughs> especially Teddy. Yeah, especially Teddy. But when they keep asking question over question over question without even applying or just attempting what we put down or um, any of that, then I just bypass. I just bypass all of that. And it's not, they'll learn sooner or later why we bypassed it or didn't answer it because they weren't willing to take their time and study a little. So I, I don't answer your, so I come back around to your point is that, that I never asked questions as a kid. I just attempted it and answered it myself. I am going to steal the fuck out of that. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Michael Hearn <laughs> it just exploded that myth, <laughs> right? He, he said, boss. <laughs> There's a million dumbass questions, <laughs> and that is so true. I'm going to quote Michael Hearn. I'm posting that shit today. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> there is a such thing as a dumbass question. Get answered a fucking million, asked a fucking million of them every day. So I got a, a big question to ask. I, I love you, and, and our friendship has blossomed into something that uh, I love, because uh, when I get a text, from you, I smile. I just, I just see it. It doesn't matter what it says. You can say, you know, what's up, MF? You know? <laughs> so, and, and I smile. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with that, we wasted a lot of time. Yep. We, uh, we started competing. We were in the same meets. Yep. Late eighties, early nineties. Yep. And we never teamed up or hung out until, I don't know, two thousand and. It was after 2010. Yeah. Yep. It would have to be after the uh, gladiators and stuff. And it was, uh, so you're talking about 20 years. Yep. Uh, no friendship. Now, I'm not saying you got to be friends with everybody, but the friendship that we have now is that's regret. I would have loved in the early 90s to go down and train with you and Big Papa. Oh, you know, yeah. I would have loved to slam yep. heads and just hung out and, and talk smack. Um, what can what kind of advice you can give? Because social media is such a hate model. Oh. oh man! And everybody hates this person or that person, or they talk and talk. Um, what can you give? What can is there any advice from your years that you can try to teach somebody that thinks that, especially you, because I grew up in this this nice town where uh, we could leave the doors unlocked and. 
uh, played football in the streets and all that kind of stuff. You didn't grow up in the in the most pure of, of <laughs> no. places. So these guys that think that uh, weightlifting and being the strongest guy and the, the attitude that has to go with it, can we kill that myth about the attitude has to fit the aggression that they're benching with or they're squatting with? Most definitely. If, uh, by the way, there was bars on every window in the, in the we grew up different yeah, <laughs> yeah we just let's leave it at that we grew up different but uh if but, you, but you grew up in the area where you had to be tough uh, i'm not talking about in the gym but you had to scrap you oh had yeah to, they, they would uh they would eat you alive if they smelt weakness boy you i'd seen uh you know some kids that uh you know, were not prepared for that environment or it just wasn't their uh, makeup to be in that type in of that environment. And they got eaten up. Yeah, oh, they got eaten alive. And I, I you know, I've uh, stood up for them many times because I hated to see it. But uh, if coming this close to dying uh, on, some, I mean, three flat lines during the first open heart surgery, Two more flat lines after that. So five flat lines all together. If you come that close to dying, you will really have a great appreciation of what's important and what's not important. Time is so precious that we don't have any time to waste on Hate. Hate is a waste of time. Time is so precious and can be taken away just like that. And I'm not going to waste any of my precious time hating anybody. It's just if people could understand. I know they, 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 they say it, but they don't really mean it. The, the woman who gave me her heart, my donor, I'm sure that she probably said to her husband, I'll see you this evening when you get home from work, honey. And she probably told her daughter, we can go shopping this weekend. She probably made, I can see her making plans like that, Mike. But she didn't make it. She didn't get to see her husband come home that evening. She didn't get to go shopping with her daughter that weekend. If she knew that that was her last day, she probably would have done something a little different. You don't know. That is the thing. You don't know when your last minute is. You're making plans and you just don't know. Time is precious. We don't have time to waste on hate. We don't have time to waste on racism. We don't have time in the, the country today is divided. We don't have time for this bullshit. Yeah. Time is so precious, Mike. And we wasted a lot of it with our <laughs> own self, man. We got time. We got to make up for this. Shit. Right. <laughs> um. I'm glad you said that. And I, uh, I was going to show a video, and I think this really encapsulates what you just said. You are lucky. Um, you're blessed. So blessed. So I found a video. I, I was looking for, because you and me were powerlifting, and we were in powerlifting magazines back in the day. And so I was looking for this picture of you and me on the same you page. A lot more magazines than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking for this picture of you and me on the same uh, page in the magazines in the early 90s. Um, and and I, I think I said it to you before, but I was looking for it again just to show them. Uh, I'm sitting there all, you know, with my gear and all that, you know, the, the straps and the belt <laughs> and all this. And, and there you are up here, the side chest and the arms are huge. And it's just cool to look back and I go, holy shit, we, we were competing and we were doing this, but we weren't boys back then. Um, haters can be lovers, right? <laughs> yeah. But I did find a video that broke my heart. 
I found a video, and it's of Mitch, me and uh, Rich Piana, mm. and we were in Vegas, and it was a fun video. We were talking about teaming up again, and, and we're going, guys, you're going to love this. We're planning this. We're going to shoot this in a few days, um, and this is over a year ago in a couple weeks now, and if you didn't realize, this was him and me planning something. And we were so hyped to team up again. Because the, the other thing we did, and, and it's again, you know, it's like uh, Rich and I go back. I won the Mr. California the year before he won Mr. California. Mm -hmm. And it's the same kind of thing. We were both in the industry, and we didn't become friends till later on. But we're excited. We're happy about this video, and we're making plans for the future. Yep. Five days later, he was dead. Yep. We're making plans and we're smiling and joking in Vegas. Yep. Five days later, he's dead. And it broke my heart, but it makes me think about life that you really do understand when things get, uh, when things go down for you, the real friends are there. Yep. But it's also that time that you wasted over here with these phonies when you should be given it all to those people that are really the core of you. That's it. And, and, and spending those quality times. And I think with, uh, with social media, you can get sucked away from all that stuff. Um, but we're older, so we can kind of appreciate this, that it is, it is about the time and us taking this time today. And with Teddy Bear, who's finally, <laughs> finally asleep, she's been moving for the last two hours. <laughs> um, I love that you're sharing the journey. Um, and I think it's, it's so cool that you have a, a woman's heart, a That's super right. woman's heart That's now right. taking you to the next level. And then you gotta keep traveling and then we gotta keep spending time with you. Um, so this is, uh, this is great for me, man. This is great for me and thanks for taking time today, spending with me, man. We got I love that you. one right. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> I love you too, Mike. Thank you for coming. Thank you for bringing Teddy. Mona, always a pleasure to see you. This, this was great. My day is made. So we, we covered uh, advice is uh, there are dumb questions. Yes. I, I'm going, oh, man. I'm <laughs> um, going to cherish that. I wish I had thought of. <laughs> the guilt. Yes. The guilt will tear you up. Spend time with those true people. Uh, the ones that are there when you're down. Skip the ones that are there when you're up. And I think, I think I left that out, but if people can't understand my love for the dogs, uh, when I lost my dad, um, that's who I would go home to and would comfort me and would just stay with me. And we, there's, there's no verbal bond. It's just a, a different kind of bond. Are you kidding me? Uh, <clears throat> I don't care. Well, when I came back from the hospital and we were gone for, how many months were we gone for? Eight, nine months? Six months. Six, six months. months. We were gone for six months uh, away from Rhonda. And when I got back home, I was still weak, real weak. And normally, you know, we play tug of war and, and uh, run around a little bit, and I play with her. And she, she knew. Woo! <laughs> She knew I was sick. Amazing. Came right up to you. Laid right next to you. It's the best thing. They sense it. All right, I'm okay. <laughs> she knew I was sick, and she didn't want to play tug of war or any of the normal stuff we do. She just laid down on top of my feet. I sit down and she laid on top of my feet and she just wanted me to rub her belly and she was good. So I'm a dog person too, man. <laughs> she knew dogs are special, super special. She knew and she just, I rubbed her for about an hour, <laughs> rubbed her belly for an hour, and she was just as happy and content. And I said, okay, baby, daddy's tired now. 
And I got up, and normally she, you know, she wants to play with me. She's, she's like, okay, I'll see you next time. <laughs> and it was, it was just great. And, you know, I was like, man, if she, is she going to, uh, I don't know, she might run and jump on me like she normally did. <laughs> but she knew. You got me going. <laughs> I guess I didn't want to talk about, and we didn't, we didn't talk about working out or how to diet or training. I think at least I wanted to say to my fans, it's, if you're going to compete, compete, but have something more to it. Yeah. When people ask me, uh, how do you make a living from uh, the sport? Be who you, what's your story? What's, what's your path? What are you going to? It's not that, I, I know a lot of Mr. Universes. Uh, I won it four times, and I know a lot of other ones. Why am I the one that's still in the industry? There's got to be a story besides it. You can't be just a title. You nope. can't be just a powerlifting champion. It won't do it. Um, so if you guys take that and, and, and understand that if you can take the eye away, and I know it's tough because I, I know yeah. I was a selfish, selfish guy when I was competing, and I still am pretty... You know, um, uh, my time. But if you can be bigger than that, and you can uh, share the ups and downs with people, and and more of who you are on on trying to be a good person, and really be a, not one of these things that they say they are. Right. We're behind the curtain at Oz. See, so we see a lot of the real thing <laughs> compared to what these people put out there. But you'll understand it when you meet them in person and stuff. You'll feel this energy that you know the guy's a good person um, and they do a lot more for society and, and life in itself. So, I love you, kid. Thanks for coming, Mike. Absolutely. Yeah, I got Absolutely. some uh, clean meals in there. You, you, you hungry? Clean? You uh, you know? We're hungry. I'm okay. always hungry. Good. <laughs> but take your choice, man. Oh. The Titan. <laughs>